Heritage on RFD-TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine in support of farming and logging with horses, mules, and oxen. For subscription information, please call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. And now Rural Heritage presents Decorative Ironwork with Brian Dale Headley. I'm Brian Dale Headley, artist blacksmith from West Salem, Illinois. Today we're going to do a little forging for y'all. We're going to try to take one of these railroad spikes. We're going to make us a nice little bullheaded stake turner out of it. Might sound a little far-fetched, but that's what we're going to try, so stay tuned. Okay, we're bringing our railroad spike that we did obtain legally from a landowner. Had some ground that the railroad passed through West Salem. They took out the track, sold the ground back to the to the folks that wanted to buy it. They bought the ground. I went out and picked me up some spikes. From what I hear, you don't want them to go picking up spikes on the railroad tracks. That's kind of one of them federal offenses, from what they tell me. So anyway, we're bringing our spike up here to a good forging heat. Because they're so thick, it does take a little time for them to get hot enough. First thing we're going to want to do is to determine exactly where we want our handle to stop and the shaft to start. We want to draw out to make the working end of the turner. And we'll do that by coming out of the fire and going to the fuller. We'll hammer down on this. And that creates a nice swage fuller end into our steel to determine where our end will start and one end ends. Don't worry about it being a little crooked. As you work metal, it's gonna get crooked. That's part of blacksmithing. You work it crooked and then work it back straight again. And also, as we go through this demonstration, we wanna keep our bucket of water handy for quenching our tongs. Because as you see, that old spike gets hot, then your tongs get hot. As your tongs get hot and you try to keep a good tight hold on your spike, or whatever iron you may be working, it's going to distort your tongs and it, it'll open them up and you can't get a good grip on what you're working on. And you always want to maintain a real good grip on what you're hammering. Because it'll bite you if you don't. So now that we've got a determination of where we want everything to start, we're going to come out of the fire. We're going to start drawing this out. I generally like to start it this way, just to kind of see how everything's going to shape up. As that cools off, we'll have to go back in and heat it up again. We'll get her good and hot this time. We're going to put the big hammer to it. So we'll pick up this eight pound hammer. We'll just pretend it don't weigh nothing. We'll just swing that old eight pounder start drawing this some down. Okay. Want to make sure we quench our tongs because every heat we're going to try to do that. I don't every time. A lot of times I forget and then my tongs get loose and I have to heat them up reshape them and then let them cool out so I can reuse them again. So we're going to try to keep that in mind.
This program is available for purchase on DVD and VHS. To order your copy, please call 369-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. This program is made possible by your continued subscription to Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi-monthly journal featuring a wide array of articles to suit both the novice and expert teamster. From ideas on new techniques to the latest in equipment advances, Rural Heritage is the indispensable tool for every logger and farmer making a living or just having fun with draft animals. Also, don't miss our extensive collection of books and DVDs covering everything from driving mules to logging with horses to training oxen. To subscribe, call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. The end.